Look, a good football team doesn't matter if it's you know elementary school football, junior high football, high school, college pro football. You know, great teams are built up front. Uh, they just are, and I think that's a big part of why Michigan's been so successful in the second half is they they just pound on you. You know, they they keep pounding, um, and it takes its toll on you. You know, the the four yard gain in the first half becomes a six yard gain in the third quarter becomes a 10-yard gain in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, and great football teams get stronger as the game goes along. So, you know, we are two of the better you know, closing football teams in college football, and, and I think it's because we're, you know, we're built with that same kind of mentality uh, and understanding of the game is one up front. It just is. Um, you want to play and compete at the very highest level, you better be good up front. And, you know, they've got an outstanding offense and defensive front. That's, to me, what their team is built around. And that's why they've had the tremendous success in the last two years and, and throughout their history of, of Michigan football. I mean, it's, that's been a, a trademark of, of those programs through the years. Um, and that's, you know, you want to close the game out, you know, recruit a heck of an offensive line, let those guys handle it. And uh, I think both teams have done that. Uh, similar, I think I think the same thing, you know, applies to us. I mean, it is. It, it's interesting. Everybody's got a different way of kind of getting ready. Um, you know, we'll have some players that, you know, listen to music on their headphones and get excited, and then other guys will just be in the corner and be quiet. And everybody kind of does what they do to get ready for a ball game. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say this: tomorrow will be a little bit of a, a, a reflection, maybe for me before kickoff. Just. Um, you know, thinking about my mentor Mike Leach and passing, I think that's going to be a big, um, you know, part of my feelings pregame tomorrow. Just uh, the impact Mike had on my life and really college football in general. And you know, we're going to wear a, a helmet sticker uh, in remembrance of Coach Leach with, with a pirate flag on it. And you know, he was a big impact on me and, and really, as I said earlier, you know, football in general. And and so I'm, I'm sure there'll be a little bit of uh, shout out to Coach Leach. You know, before I take the field, just again, what, what he meant to me personally and in my life, and certainly wouldn't be here uh, without his uh, guidance and mentor, mentorship and the, the huge impact he had on my life. And uh, just an original guy that, that did things his way and an outside the box thinker, and just was really blessed and fortunate to have a chance to work with him. So I'm sure his memory will certainly cross my mind before we take the field tomorrow as well. So I think, you know, when you, when you sit down and you talk about end of game situations, you know, the way college football is now, there's a lot of parity in this game. Um, and again, you look at our, our games this year, uh, we didn't have um, a lot of games that weren't decided at the very end of the game, uh, whether it was four minute offense where we're trying to run the clock out and get a couple of first downs to win, uh, or whether it was two minute offense where we were playing from behind or even, we needed to go down and, and try to win the game at the end of the game. Um, you know, those situations are a small part of the game, but to me, those are the situations that determine whether or not you're up here in the podium in the, in the college football playoff, really. Um, you know, had we not handled some of those situations pretty well, then we wouldn't be here today. You know, I think it all begins with your preparation, and, and it's something that we'll emphasize all spring, all fall camp, um, you know, just like everybody else uh, during the week of preparation. But at the same time, it's it's uh, it, there's such a fine line between winning and losing, and you better be good in those situations. Whether it's two minute, whether it's red zone goal line, whether it's short yardage, all those situations in college football today determine the teams that win or lose every Saturday. Um, we're not a team, you know, we're not a team full of um, first round draft picks or anything like that. I mean, look, we've got really good players, but. You know, we're going to have to, to master those situations and be really good at them to have an opportunity to win. Um, it, it's different. You know, I think, as I said earlier, this is really the first time for a lot of our guys in our program to, to go through bowl preparation. Um, and there is a, kind of an art to it. Um, there's, you, you know, you sit down, as everything, you sit down and you say, okay, what are we trying to accomplish? And number one, you're trying to win the game. Uh, but there's also an element of, we want to develop our young players as well. You know, a lot of these guys, you know, you're trying to win as you go through the season, and, and sometimes your young players get put on the back burner to an extent. 
So, you know, we kind of sat down and said, all right, what do we want to accomplish here, you know, with this experience? And uh, obviously it's get to the championship game and try to win a championship. But also in addition to that, it's, it's you know, let's, let's try to get better as a program. Let's try to develop our young players. Um, and, you know, at the same time, try to give our guys a great experience uh, with, with the idea of, again, the emphasis on winning the game. So a lot of thought and planning and conversations went into it. You know, we tried to call around uh, and talk to some, some folks that had been, you know, in, through this before. It is a little different. You do, you know, three weeks between games is a little unusual. Um, but, you know, I think we needed to, to get some rest. That was first and foremost. Some guys healed up and some guys rested. Um, and then at the same time, try to develop our young players for the future and then prepare to, to play our best football on Saturday. So it's been a heck of an experience. I think we've handled it well. You know, it, we'll find out Saturday. I mean, that'll be the thing is, is if we go out and play well Saturday, then we'll feel great about our preparation. And, and if we don't, we'll feel really bad about it. And that's just kind of the way it so works. TCU is where you are specifically as a head coach. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, when you grow up around the game of football, you can't help but, uh, you know, have a tremendous respect for the history and the tradition um, of the game. You know, my dad um, obviously had a huge impact on my life, just, um, you know, the way he dealt with people and the way he treated people and uh, the relationship he had with players, I think, was was a great lesson for me to learn. You know, just about, people talk about the football family, but just seeing it every day, you know, seeing the former and current players that my dad and, and our family, you know, interacted with really on a daily basis. And you learn kind of after the fact how how big of an impact um, coaches can have in the lives of, of football players and, and student athletes really across all sports. Um, you know, I think that relationship between player and coach is, is a really unusual relationship. Um, and so, you know, I, I think my dad loved teams that were unselfish. Um, that was one of the things that he talked about all the time was, you know, it's, it's amazing what can be accomplished when people didn't care who got the credit. Um, I've heard that one million times from my, from my dad growing up. Um, and I think this team really embodies that philosophy. Uh, we've got a, a group of guys that really sacrifice for each other, really invest in each other really care about each other uh, on a very, very deep level. Um, and a team that, again, never quits, regardless of, of what the situation is. They're gonna play through the, through the whistle, uh, through the quarter, through the half, through the game, uh, never quit. Um, and I think he would be proud and impressed with, uh, with the level of commitment that these guys have. You know, one of the things my dad used to do when he used to come watch our teams, he would walk around the sideline during the game and pay attention really to more to what was happening on the bench than actually what was happening in the games. Uh, he always said you can learn really what's going on with your team by watching the body language and the interaction of the players that weren't playing the game. And I think he'd be really proud of our guys. I mean, the guys on the sideline are cheering for the other guys. They may not be the ones that are getting the, the credit or the acclaim or the, the press or whatever the case may be, but they really care about the, their teammates and they really have that unselfish attitude and it's really about what can we do together as opposed to what can I do individually. And so, you know, in my 28 years of coaching, I think this is why this is probably my favorite team I've ever coached because it's just a real unique collection of unselfish young people. Um, and, you know, I think when you do it as long as I have, you, you really appreciate that when you see it. And so I think he would be really proud of this team and. I think he would really get a kick out of the, you know, our quarterback and, and the way he competes and his unselfish attitude and and uh, never say die mentality. Forward to when we watch TCU tomorrow. Yeah, I think um, again, I just want to thank uh, Verbo for for their support of this event, the City of Glendale, and uh, the Fiesta Bowl has just been outstanding. So I just want to say thank you uh, to everybody that's made this week so enjoyable for our players and our coaches and, and everybody associated with TCU football. Um, you know, I think uh, our, our team is a team that's going to play hard. Uh, I like, our, you know, our guys, that we play for 60 minutes regardless of the score. Uh, we're going to be a team that's excited to play. 
Um, you know, we've been a team that has overcome a lot of obstacles this year. Uh, we've talked about it at length, but we were picked seventh in the preseason poll in the Big 12 uh, this year. You know, probably five, maybe six players on our team have been to a bowl game before. The other 125 players have never participated in a, in a college football bowl game, so this is new for us. Um, but our guys have adapted incredibly well. So I think you'll see a team that's going to play hard, be excited to play, uh, you know, play physical, play a tough brand of football, um, and, and never quit. Um, you know, we've been a team that has uh, shown a lot of resilience this year, and, um, you know, and certainly it'll be a big challenge for us playing against Michigan. But our guys are very excited about it and looking forward to, to going out and competing against the best. We tell our guys all the time, if you want to be the best, you have to compete against the best, and you look at Michigan over the last two years, especially they're 25 and two. Um, you know, it's been a it's been a heck of a run uh, by their program and their players, and um, our guys are excited to compete against the best.